Okay, welcome back to our final, final, final tutorial. And I'm going to talk about how to actually um, export the mesh now. And so what we're gonna do here, uh, we're pretty stressed on time, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit both. Hit Control A, and I'm very anal about applying scale and rotation because it can mess things up. Um, so I'm gonna do this once more. Go ahead, save my mesh. Okay, one last time, make sure everything's um, everything's good. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to the exporter here and go to exactly the same way we did with the import and we select Net Immerse Gambr Gambrio and then we'll go up here and name this so, so I can show you how to do it, I will do it. Okay, and then we go ahead and hit export NIF and then, okay, so I don't know everything about this exporter. There's actually quite a bit of data here that I don't know anything about. Um, there's just, it's just very hard to know everything. So, uh, okay, so first off, um, we want to make sure that we're exporting the correct materials. So up here, we have in the, the top left hand corner you'll see export geometry plus animation, export geometry only, and export animation only. Export geometry plus animation. I sometimes use it for exporting characters so that I can make sure that that rig data is exported as well. Um, but you always want to make sure that the, um, the data is you know, I, I actually don't end up using that. I, I may not prefer to use that at this point because export geometry only should carry over that information, but I'm just not entirely certain. So I want to make sure. Um, export geometry only. I'm only exporting a glass. It's just a clutter object. So all we want to do is just export the generic geometry. If I were doing animations for a door or something, I would export animation uh, KF files. The only time I would use animation, the export geometry plus animation for animated statics is if I only wanted to export and have it use one animation. For some reason when I export it um, with the animation file um, connected to it, it it only, uh, it doesn't seem to save it correctly. It only sets it as an idle. And um, so it, it'll take a little more experimentation with that to get everything down pat. I usually do the anim export and open and then the close animation separately in KF files, then export the, and export the geometry itself. And then I put it all together in NIF scope is usually how I do things like doors. So um, that kind of covers that a little bit. Um, and then the other things you want to go in here, and I'm not sure what this all is for. It might actually help you to import your animations with your, your data but you know we want to with your geometry but I haven't used that so uh, always always make sure that when you export anything for Fallout that you have Fallout selected this was this exporter was made for several a bunch of different games as you can see a whole bunch of crap down here a lot of this is a lot of these settings are for things like Oblivion as well so as you notice down here there's something called in the lower right hand, kind of in the middle actually, it's called weapon body location and these are for weapons. You might actually use these for um, Fallout games. Uh, they're probably better for Oblivion for a lot of stuff like quiver, shield, helmet, ring, things like that. They're all going to be for body locations for weapons and things like that. Okay. Um, so over here back on the left hand side you're going to see Force VDS extension. That's that deals with texturing stripified geometries down here just below that and it deals more with uh, it'll rebuild the mesh itself um, you can also do that inside of NIF scope itself the only time I would use that inside of NIF scope itself is to rebuild a body mesh for a character sometimes when you export the body mesh or a clothing mesh it won't show up properly until you uh, stripify the geometries inside that. When you do that, 
Um, you may actually end up with holes in your mesh. If you look at the mesh, it looks like there's holes inside of NIF scope. There really isn't. As long as you leave your stencil property on, it will, you'll have back facing. So you'll be able to see double-sided faces. You can see on both sides of the face uh, of each triangle. So it doesn't matter. Those holes will show up inside of NIF scope, but they won't show up inside the GEC or inside the game uh, itself. Stripified geometries is something I would turn on. Um, probably it might actually save you that step. I'm not entirely certain, but I would just leave it on just in case. Uh, smooth and inner object seams and flattened skin and export skin partition, I believe, is more for uh, making sure that you correct seams and that you don't have as many problems with seams, especially with characters, character models and anything animated, uh, That's especially stuff that's rigged to um, to an armature or a skeleton. Um, combine materials to increase performance, something that you probably will want to do to, you know, you want things to run fast and smooth. Um, and then up here, I'm going to talk a lot about collision options. Um, up here, you'll notice that you have um, different settings, like you have static, animated static, clutter, weapon, creature, right? So in here you have, each one of these is a different um, setting for collision options. And you'll actually find these settings inside a mesh itself, okay? So if I were to open up my C drive right now, um, do, do, do. actually I went in the wrong, okay. If I went into my C drive and I opened up uh, table round, okay. We're going to go ahead and open that with NIFSCO. Um, a second here while it loads. And there we go. Okay, so if we go under the collision data here, you'll notice that under uh, rigid body, you'll see different kinds of um, settings here. And you notice how I talked about this red outline for collision mesh as well. That red outline depends on what you're actually, uh, what the object is. So for instance, I could take this table and I could set it to an animated static. If I wanted to animate this, I would set it to animated static. Notice how that changes um, to purple, okay? That's because it's designed, this particular mesh is designed for animated statics, okay? So that's just another thing to make note of. Um, also, you have your BSX flags, which you'll notice inside of NIFSCOPE as well. Um, that's something else that's very, very important. Um, I would leave it at default probably. Your mass will tell it how heavy it is. Um, so you may want to play with that setting. And then under here, under these uh, ecstatic, animated static, all this stuff, you'll see different settings for it. So you have cloth, glass, metal, skin, wood, and uh, remember how I talked about have matte uh, glass and have matte metal and things like that. I believe this is where that data goes. And this just tells the game what the object is, how to react to it, um, what type of material, what it's made out of, etc., etc. Okay, And this says whether it's hollow or a solid mass. And for this glass, for instance, I would set it up as a clutter object. It's going to be a clutter object. So actually, when I do a clutter object, that uh, <clears throat> that uh, collision mesh should actually show up as kind of a, a, a strange blue color, okay, to represent that it's a clutter, um, that it's a cl clutter collision mesh. And then we go in here, and you know, I might I might take that mass down a little bit to I don't know. Something maybe we'll do like two. I don't know. Something interesting here. Okay, and then we'll go. Well, it'll be a hollow object, so we want it to be hollow. Um, and you've got some other things in here that um, are. I'm not sure exactly what those are for. We won't get into those. And then over here under shader options, these are all very important. You need to go to default, and then you've got default, skin, and cloth. So default is, you would use that for statics, anything uh, 
Veer Clutter, Animated Statics, and Statics, I would suggest using this. Um, for skin and cloth, you will want to use that for creatures, characters, clothing, anything that you rig, okay? And always make sure that shadow map is on. If I use default, for instance, on a character mesh, all of these settings with these shaders would be wrong. And then if I exported that, um, the mesh would either not show up, it would show up as a two-dimensional thing, it would just, there would be a huge mess of crap all over the screen. And it could actually also crash uh, the GEC very easily and screw up your game until you actually remove that data from the game. Um, you may actually even have to go through and and edit your uh, ES, ESP file to get rid of it or delete it out of the, the level if possible. It's just a pain. Um, the other thing you're going to want to do, so make sure to always, always have this stuff set up. Um, set it to default. Uh, for, in this case, it's, it's static, right? We're using, um, actually it's, we want it set on three. So it's glass, it's clutter, glass, hollow, and we wanted a massive, oops, of uh, two here. And then we wanna make sure we have all the defaults on. One other thing you absolutely must add is Shadow Frustum. For some reason, if you do not have this on, I don't know why in the scripts it doesn't just default this for Fallout 3 settings and Fallout New Vegas settings because it is required pretty much for the most part. If you don't have that on, a lot of times your mesh will not show up. It'll just be invisible and won't exist, okay? So make sure that you always have this on. So we're gonna go ahead and export this model for now, okay? And we're gonna go into our C directory here um, we're going to go down here to, uh, to our wine glass and open it up. Okay. Oops. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, have a little bit of brain fart there. Open this up and we're kind of running on tight on time. So I'm going to have to go through this very quickly. Notice that we have BSX flags here. Um, you can go in here and change these. For instance, you want Havoc and Collision because it's a clutter object. You don't need any skeleton or animation and, or flame nodes or anything like that. Um, if you do furniture objects, you'll want to add furniture markers and add that data in manually here. I don't know if you can do that in Blender. It may be possible. I'm not sure. Okay, so we go in here to BK Collision Objects and you'll see that our mesh is set up correctly. You'll see that it's set as a clutter object down here and down here. The response is simple contact, which is what you want. Our um, collision uh, our collision mesh is a mop object, and you'll see that it um, is set to have matte glass as we set it up in Blender. You can actually change all these settings to whatever you need them to be and edit them in here and then save it out. Just be very careful when you're doing so because you can't undo settings and you'll have to re-export it in order to uh, redo everything. Okay, and then you see your data down here. Um, and then we'll go down here to try strips. This is your mesh itself. You can edit the material properties. You can edit the alpha channel, all that. You can make it emissive so it can actually glow. You can uh, tell it to emit and how much light to emit from it, what color of light to emit from it. This is the tri-strips data itself. Um, we'll go back up here into under shader lighting property, expand that out and you'll see texture set. Go down here into block details. Check down here and it actually did set our, uh, our information when we exported it out. It did apparently set up our data correctly. So you can do it in Blender. In fact, I was wrong about that. I do apologize. Um, and here's your wine glass in. It actually will remember each time you do this, it will remember where the last directory that you were in was located. So if your last directory was in glassware, it, uh, it was in my directory where I have my textures, then it will go there for the next one. And you just set those up. As you can see, this is great. Um, in here, you'll see that we have an alpha property and an stencil property. Otherwise, if 
And um, I may actually cut this off at this point. So we'll talk to you guys in the next video.